Uh, welcome to Butterflies of the Biosphere. I'm Dan Danahar and with me today I've got Rich Howarth from the Brighton and Lewis Downs Biosphere. Hello. And Nigel Symington from Butterfly Conservation. Hi. Well today we're here to talk about the biosphere because ordinarily this is about butterflies. So Rich, what is a biosphere? Okay, the biosphere is our local environment. It's what's all around us here in the Brighton and Lewis Downs. The whole biosphere is the whole living planet, but our biosphere is our local environment. It's the downs, the towns and the coast that we have in this wonderful area. What's so special about this particular place? Okay, so UNESCO clearly think we're special. We're part of this international network. Uh, one of the key things that we have is the chalk grassland, which is so good for butterflies, of course. But we've also got this chalk under the sea too. We've got chalk reefs, for example. And the people here are really important, the work that's going on on the environment to look after it, to make it a better place, to come up with new ideas to look after it. Thank you. Uh, Nigel? Butterfly conservation are partners of the biosphere, aren't they? We are indeed, yes. Why, why do you think that's important? Well, people have come up to me and said, you know, why does the biosphere matter? Because it's so soft that you can't really touch it. But on the other hand, I see it as a statement of intent, that it's a commitment to living in an uh, in ecologically friendly way. And I think really it's a statement by the City Council to say, frankly, my dear, we do give a damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally well put. <laughs> Okay, gentlemen, well, we're here now really basically to have a little look at more common butterflies you might expect to find as on a general walk. Um, and we've just this minute seen a common blue, haven't we? Nigel, yeah. common blues, uh, they're, they're doing quite, having a quite a good year, aren't they? Well, I've seen quite a few of them out and about, yes. And uh, there were a whole lot outside your house this morning. <laughs> and I've seen some up at other parts of the downs, almost wherever I've been for a walk. Yeah, it's fantastic that, uh, that, that a lot of people are interested in butterflies, uh, Rich, but uh, are more people interested in, in, in butterflies and birds, or are there, is there more interest in other areas within the biosphere? Um, I mean, birds are obviously a really popular group for, you know, nationally as well as within the biosphere, but butterflies are, if you like, an up-and-coming group and have been for, for a long time. They're one of my personal favourites. I think people are really attracted to them, and well, I suppose what interests me as an ecologist in particular is the, what the butterflies you see actually link to the environment that you have and the quality of that environment. For example, we've got sheep grazing here, which Brighton Hove City Council are doing with the Herdwick sheep. That's maintaining, restoring the chalk grassland. That's supporting a much greater butterfly diversity, especially some of our, our blue species. We heard about the common blue, but some of the rarer ones too, like the Adonis blue, for example. Yeah, yeah well, one of the other things which really interests me is when you think about it, We've got this great big expanse of land, and in a way, we're now beginning to look like putting it really under the micro microscope and really looking at it in, in a way that we've perhaps never done before because we've now identified this, this boundary. But you've always said to me, I'm kind of worried about having a boundary, Dan, because if you have a boundary, it makes people think that just inside is good mm -hmm. and not outside. Yeah, I mean, the boundary is a soft boundary. We, we have to have a boundary as a UNESCO biosphere area, so, so that, that's required, if you like, and that's where we focus our efforts. But, you know, we, we look over the boundary too. We're Brighton and Hove City Council, for example, the lead partner on the biosphere partnership, is working with the neighbouring authorities, with Lewis and Ada, works closely with the South Downs National Park Authority as well. So, so the boundary is, is a way of focusing effort, but it's not a hard line by any means. So, Rich, what's the history of the biosphere? How long did it take to get into, uh, into being? Okay, so the, the idea started back in 2007, 2008. There was a conference which the City Council organised. Looking at, at that point, they were talking about just an urban biosphere reserve. That was the phrase that they used. The idea grew quite a bit, and I've been in post since 2011, running this project, developing the whole proposal. So, actually, from 2011 to 2013 is when we submitted our plans within two years. We grew our partnership, we grew the area that we were proposing to become a biosphere, and then we had to wait nine months, it was a bit like being pregnant or something, yeah. you know, uh, for, for the outcome. And the outcome we had last June, so we're actually a year old pretty much to the day uh, yeah, yeah, now. Fantastic. So this is our, our first year of life and, uh, and operation with, with this international status and award. What's it been like that first year? Uh, it's been very busy, uh, lots of opportunities, new partners come on board, um, there's been some good funding opportunities for, for individual projects, so we've done work for example on looking at the, the scope for rain gardens in, in Brighton and Hove in particular in Port Slade, 
uh, looking at how we might use nature to cope with flooding problems. So using nature to help ourselves. So really getting people to start thinking about how nature in gets involved with their everyday lives and their working lives. Which is what the biosphere is all about. It's about that connection with what's here on our doorstep, what's in our local environment. We're very lucky in the biosphere area that we've got so much on our local environment, so, so much diversity, interest of species and habitats and so many people are sort of running activities and, and, and keen to engage with it yeah has it been rewarding very much so yeah very much so it's it's, it's a labor a labor of love is well, I what, what, so. what i describe it as well, i suppose yeah. on a personal level it must be exceedingly rewarding because i mean a lot of that work was your own wasn't it? it it was so so i have a sort of if you like a professional interest but um you know i'm a brighton and hove resident just 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 like yourself uh and there's somewhere that i care for it's my adopted home it's where my kids have uh, been born and grown up yeah. as well so so it's about you know doing what i think is right for for our area to, to improve it and to, to give ourselves a good future well i think i think one of the things which which we from butterfly conservation are really keen about is the fact that there's so much good work is being done within the biosphere area and, and in fact brighton and hope has a very long history i mean we're standing behind us uh, sorry behind us now are some sheep aren't they yeah that's uh, right they herdwicks yeah and nigel i mean Butterfly conservation are really pleased to see sheep around, aren't they, for obvious reasons? Well, I think when they're, when they're well managed, they make the turf superb for butterflies to breed. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, it's a bit of sound conservation in practice. Yeah, And the people really like them as well, mo most people. Uh... Well, I think the lovely thing about Brighton is that in the city you've got these great fingers of downland yes. coming in. And I don't know many other cities where people have access to open countryside like this. Absolutely. There's so much wonderful wildlife on Yeah, this. Cheek by jowl is Cheek how I jowl. describe yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Rich, a lot of work has gone into this so far. What do you think the future of our biosphere is? Yeah, we're, we're still quite a young initiative. Uh, we've been going formally for a year, plus the build-up and the development and submitting the bid to UNESCO. So there's still loads and loads of work to do. There's lots of potential. We want to use this new ambition, this new status, basically, to do much more in the future, working together. And already we've built up a really good partnership, including my friend here from but, Butterfly Conservation well, Sussex. I, I hope that will give rise to a lot of new opportunities, knowing that the council is putting all this investment into building up the biosphere and knowing that they support th these objectives. I think we'll be able to develop a whole lot of exciting projects yeah. which will be taken forward. So how large is the biosphere? The Brighton and Lewis Downs biosphere is just bigger than the Isle of Wight is the easiest comparison, actually. It's about 150 square miles in area. 390 square kilometres so we're probably a medium or yes yeah, maybe on the smaller side size biosphere compared to the international network some of them are absolutely huge and some are some are quite small so we're somewhere in the middle but the fact we've got these three environments together makes us really special so how can people be involved with the biosphere well we want as many people to know about what the biosphere is the good thing that it is and how they can get engaged with it so one very simple way actually is to have a look at our website www.biospherehere.org.uk and you can sign up there as a friend of the biosphere. There's 2,000 local people already signed up to show their support but also receive our monthly newsletter for example. It tells you about all sorts of events that are running in the local area, gives you uh, an idea of what's going on to improve our environment, what different organisations such as Butterfly Conservation are doing here. I have to tell you, I've really, really enjoyed doing Butterflies of the Biosphere. I didn't anticipate how much fun it was, but, you know, how helpful is the Butterflies of the Biosphere? The Butterflies of the Biosphere is a really welcome initiative. That's exactly what we want the new Biosphere to do, is to inspire new activity, new ways of engaging people. You've already got you know, a great Facebook page running. There's some fantastic videos of local experts being brought in. And really the idea of this is to engage like a much wider audience in what is a beautiful group, and it's a perfect time of year to be seeing these things as well. Well, I think also what strikes me is you're very lucky that you're in the middle of a large city here. There's a huge population round about, and you've got these beautiful green fields right in the middle of it all. Yeah. So people have really got access to this. Yeah. And I think it gives everyone a chance to come and see butterflies and understand what's important for their survival. Absolutely. And I think it's a vitally important educational initiative. Yeah. Yeah, and we're, we're very unusual in being a, an urban, uh, our biosphere with an urban area within it. There's um, over a third of a million people living in our biosphere area. That's unusual for the, for the international network. Many places are rural in nature and quite, quite remote. So this really is the opportunity for people to engage with their environment, which is what biospheres are all about. Uh, one obvious question is, you know, how many partners have we got now? 
Uh, there's over 40 different organisations involved. Some of them are public bodies, local authorities, government agencies, but there's also the private sector. We work with the bus and train company, for example. Uh, we work with both the local universities, Brighton and Sussex, as well as Plumpton College, and many different NGOs and charitable groups, including Butterfly Conservation Sussex. Well, uh, being a school teacher at Dorothy Stringer, uh, I know that Dorothy Stringer itself has been a, a partner since the very beginning, and, and I know they're very, they're very pleased to do so. I think it's really important that uh, Dorothy Stringer are involved in the Brighton and Lewis Downs Biosphere Project. Young people today live in a, in a, in a very, very uncertain world, and it's important that they learn about the importance of their environment and also about being good environmental stewards. We spend a lot of uh, time at Dorothy Stringer developing our environment and biodiversity and I, and I think it's, it's critical for their education. It's also uh, very important for their well-being I think that our students have access to, to nature uh, and outside the classroom. Uh, it makes them happy, it makes them feel good about themselves, so that, for that reason it's also very important. Common blue, isn't yeah, it? No, very, no. Some of them are very blue. And there's okay. another one. Another one, yes, that's, yeah. that is a common blue, isn't yeah. it? But there was a small blue just flying over there. It just went over down, yeah. down there, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, being fended off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, there we are. Uh, a short supplemental episode about the biosphere itself, not so much about butterflies. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming along. Thank you, uh, Rich. <laughs> thank you, Nigel. Well, Dan, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, Dan. <laughs> <laughs>